Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you so much for dropping in on Series 7 of Dropping In with Mercedes. This is a series where I get to hear amazing stories from amazing athletes. They are part of Team Canada's Paralympic teams. This is Episode 66, so let me introduce the athlete that we will be dropping in with today. This guest was on skates at the age of three years old and played in AAA hockey. When he was 15 years old while playing hockey, he broke his leg. After surgery, they found a growth behind his leg. At 16 years old, he went through eight months of chemotherapy, and his left leg was amputated due to that growth that they found. It was a diagnosis of spindle cell sacroma, a type of connective tissue cancer. He began playing sledge hockey at 17 years old. In 2011, a year later, the Canadian men's national para ice hockey team he landed on that team. Another year later, in 2013, he became the youngest member of Team Canada to win gold at the 2013 IPC Sledge Ice Sledge Hockey World Championships. He is now a two-time world champion, a three-time world champion silver medalist, a three-time Paralympian. That is a three-time Paralympic medalist as well being named captain to Team Canada's sledge hockey team in 2019 to 2020 season. This brother, son, sledge hockey player, captain, world champion, Paralympic medalist, doesn't let much get in his way. Let me introduce Tyler McGregor. Hi, Tyler. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Thanks I'm good. For Thanks for coming awesome. on. No, I love that I love that we met so long ago and now I know way more about you <laughs> by doing your bio. I'm like, oh sick. Funny <laughs> <laughs> how that works, eh? Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, are you ready to drop in, Tyler? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Ten rapid fire questions that are never rapid. That's right, how we do, that's how we do it on dropping in. <laughs> Number one, do you have a lucky charm? I don't actually. Oh my gosh, no one seems to. Are you superstitious really? at all? Uh, I'm actually, you know what, like five years ago, I would have said not at all. Okay. Um, but that's coming with age as well, for sure. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit more superstitious. Okay. Like I, like I would say my early 20s, I, I didn't even really have much of a routine. I was, I was a guy that just like, you know, I'd love to show up to the rink and just play and be left alone. And I'd drink coffee until... 10 minutes before warm up and get on the ice. But now I'm just not like that. I'm kind of a, becoming a, more of a creature of habit. Oh, interesting. I love it. Uh, number two, favorite place that you've traveled to for sledge hockey. And then also another one for pleasure. Um, I would say for hockey, it would definitely be probably Italy either. Like we've been done a few trips to Torino. Uh, I was just in Milan in October, I believe. Okay. Um, for pleasure, geez. For, that's funny you say Torino. I haven't heard that since 2006. That was my first yeah, Olympic. I know. Yeah, <laughs> Torino's, Torino's not my favorite place, but yeah, like it was nice first to see in Italy. And then yeah. for pleasure, um, I don't know. I I would say probably Hawaii, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what island? I've only been to Maui. Uh, Maui. Yeah. Me okay. Yeah. yeah. I know it. That's uh, funny. It's, it's been years. I, I wanted to go back, or I still do want to go back so bad, but. I just haven't. There's so many places to go. Yeah, true, true, true. Nice. Hawaii. Um, okay, where in the world are you today? I'm in Toronto, uh, in my in my condo here in Toronto. Awesome. And are you, since you say Toronto, this is the follow-up to that question, are you big city or small town kind of guy? I grew up in a small town, and yeah. uh, I could not wait to get out. So <laughs> I, I'm... <laughs> I'm I'm at this point in my life I'm a big city guy, but uh, yes. I think about ten years down the line, um, you know, give or Back take, I'll be, I'll be a, a small town guy again, ready ready for a little break from the big. Yeah, city a little lifestyle. bit here and there. Yeah. It's nice to switch mm -hmm. it up a little sometimes. Awesome. Um, okay, when you're training in the gym, I've been asking every Paralympian this question. I should like ask everyone this question because I think it's interesting. Um, 
when you're having like a big session in the gym, are you headphones on or are you headphones off? I'm headphones off. Off. You want to mm-hmm. hear your breath. Yeah. I, okay. I don't, I, I don't need external factors to, to get me motivated, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, at least I like to, at least I like to believe that. Yeah. 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 I love that. Um, okay. And when number six, number five, when you're in the gym, is there anything that you need to adapt to um, for yourself? Um, there, there certainly is. Like we, and, and this is something that we've discussed or we've been discussing recently, at least within our team. Like we obviously don't have as many opportunities for like dynamic um, exercises. I'll say, um, yeah. you know, without you know full use of of our legs. But I think. Um, especially like as we've been transitioning kind of our training focus the past few years. Um, that's something I'm trying to learn again, just like, you know, trying to increase flexibility and mobility in my lower body yeah. and, and my hips. Um, but, you know, there's definitely certain things like I'm not, I'm not going out and doing any squats, although like, yeah. you know, so I, I really, for, like I'm missing my leg. So um, I kind of have to, if I'm doing any lower body work, it's, it's a lot of single leg, um, like single leg squats, stuff. just with yeah. like weights in your yeah. Arm, hands. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing um, a, a wheel, a wheelchair athlete that would like do pull ups with his wheelchair on, mm-hmm. and I was yeah. like, yeah, mad no. respect. <laughs> yeah, I, and I actually like I should know this. I'm around them all the time, but I don't. I don't even really know how much a, a wheelchair would weigh, but it's nonetheless it's just some added weight. That, to do a pull-up. Totally. Um, I, 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 it blew my mind. I was like, okay, what am I even doing here? I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Number five, um, number six, do you have a favorite game that you played like one of your, um, sledge hockey games? Yeah. Uh, 2017 world championships, our gold medal game, uh, I guess yeah. us, we won that, that year. So that was our last world championship, world championship win. Um, but that's by far my favorite. A nice gold medal. That's nice to have. Yeah. Um, number seven, what is the top place in Canada for you guys to train that you like? It doesn't have to be like just your personal preference. Our, our team, my, like my personal preference, and I would say our teams as well, uh, yeah. just kind of we, we continue to go back there both, you know, for personal um, reasons, but uh, probably yeah. St. John's, Newfoundland. Oh no way! Yeah, we, oh, cool. we we've, we've actually our last four or five tournaments that we've hosted have all been in maritime provinces, and one of them was in St. John. Um, but there's there's a group of us that goes back there almost every year. Uh, my girlfriend actually used to live and work out there, so like it's okay. one of my favorite places in Canada. Yes, Newfoundland. Yeah. Never been. Yeah. Need to go. Yeah. What up, absolutely. Newfoundland? Highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, number eight. If you're not training, what can people find you doing? Uh, I love playing other sports, uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, I would love to be golfing a little bit more than I am this summer. Uh, I'm or addicted. Have been this summer, uh, you probably find me up at the cottage. Um, okay. But then I'm also like, I'm kind of a nerd lately. I I love just being at home. I love trying to like learn and learn how to build a business. I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure out the tax system. Um, oh, so, <laughs> you and me both, my friend, adulting. Yeah. I like to call that adulting so, yeah, and I don't exactly. like it. <laughs> so I, I, I honestly, like I, I spend a lot of time at home just reading and yeah. trying to learn, learn some new things. <laughs> Listen up kids, it's not a bad thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, number nine, how and if yes, did the pandemic change your training? I think, I think it was actually beneficial in terms of training in some, okay. some ways. Um, yeah. It, it forced me to just with limited access to facilities at the start. Like one of the things I, I would say, I, you know, when you're young, you can get away with it. Like I kind of neglected the whole like mobility and prehab training aspect of, of preparation. Yeah. Um, when I was young and, and now, you know, I'm, I'm 28. I feel like I'm 40. <laughs> um, 
like I, I like I, it forced me to focus on that because there, there was yeah. so much time and I, I live in a condo I don't have the luxury of having a, a home gym so I, I did so much of it um in so head. I adapted in that sense and I, I would say just like it just forced me to, to be a little bit more detailed in um in how I, I train and prepare were you guys able to play at all together or was that out of the question well we had the first six months like or however long it was like the, the initial it felt like forever the pandemic. yeah <laughs> um when they when they literally closed access to everything we, yeah. we were doing like we were doing zoom workouts from from home okay um but then they they granted oh, us yeah. um, an exception to get back into the facilities uh from then on and we were fortunate uh i think for most of the pandemic we were able to access um, ice three days a week and then the awesome. gym and whatever day we needed so that was that was nice um, yeah but we, we weren't denied full access which was right which was I had cool. uh I had Billy on uh, my shoulder season blues series and yeah. uh and I remember him saying well we did zoom and that was something else <laughs> I was uh, like, it, it was, it was, yeah it was crazy to think about it. like I when the when everything shut down I think it was like March 15th or whatever yeah um, 2020 visiting, yeah I was visiting my girlfriend in in Newfoundland at the time and okay. I like initially like initially I was just terrified like I was I was there I didn't have a return flight home and I um, oh you thought you were gonna staying, get stuck there yeah well I kind of did like I ended up staying for probably two and a half months oh my gosh and <laughs> I was literally doing I was doing like new workouts like kettlebell well I was using a a big bag of like a 20 pound bag of basmati rice as like a kettlebell, <laughs> doing kettlebell swings yeah. with that. like just finding everything i could get my hands on to use because like at that time i don't know if you remember but um like everything in in any department store oh like, was you couldn't, sold you out. couldn't find a dumbbell or, or no. anything so everyone um, was working out i'm sure yeah. everyone got fit yeah push on year two i gained some weight <laughs> <laughs> yeah but believe me like outside of training like I, I developed some lazy habits during the yeah. pandemic like you spent so much time at home so tricky um, I started, started watching TV that, but, I know yeah. I started watching TV on the treadmill because I was like okay you're just gonna get even more depressed <laughs> yeah. if you're sitting on your couch doing nothing yeah well, so wild you found inspiration well, I still got to shed yeah. some of that weight off somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know walking around the golf course is going to do it for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm still working out. I had to really get back on that train. So when you retire, yeah, hit me up because I, it's a roller coaster of everything. Yeah, well, I can imagine. <laughs> um, okay, number 10. You went from watching the opening ceremonies with your mom um, to being at the games. Did you get to join the team in the opening ceremonies or did you stay back? Yeah. Um, no, I was there in in uh, 2014. Yeah, that was my my uh, my first opening ceremonies. It was cool because we, we watched the Vancouver games together. Like that was right when I was just starting chemo and kind of like, at a real low point in my life and my mom was actually my mom and some of uh well my two aunts so her two sisters and um and my cousin they were all going to the vancouver games and then she had to yeah. cancel her trip and i just i remember feeling so bad at the time like i was i was like such a naive little teenage kid um yeah and i was like why are you canceling this opportunity and anyways like we were watching the opening ceremonies and i remember saying to her like we're gonna be there in four years and at the time like Kind of unaware of you know what that path would look like I, I figured we'd just go to the games and watch as fans but yeah. it was kind of special to to be able to be there competing and they were they were there as well so that was that was pretty awesome i got goosebumps i love that <laughs> Well, that was our rapid fire, but I want to talk more about the Paralympics 2014. Um, do the the whole did, did the whole sledge hockey team go to the opening ceremonies? Because yeah, they're uh, they like in, at the Olympics, you you can or you can decide to not go, yeah. or your team decides that you're not going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we've we've gone to all three that I've been a part of. Um, awesome. And this is actually a, a, a discussion that came from Beijing. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to go to the next one. Um, okay. Because we always play the very next day. And, yeah. like, you know, the just the energy that the opening ceremonies bring. 
Uh, yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't fall asleep that that night um, in Beijing until like three a.m. and we played at noon the next day. Oh no! Um, so I slept, I slept like four hours, and um, and in Beijing as well. Like you had the that the the Beijing twenty twenty two app or whatever, and you had to log how you're feeling every day, and I got lost <laughs> out of that, and I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm like they're they're you're gonna like, hold I'm me back tired. in the village. Yeah, <laughs> no, like. You, you have to for for COVID reasons. So yeah, like they they say that there's like strict protocols around that, and I was I was just panicking in bed, like oh my god, they're not gonna let me out of the village. They're, I'm not gonna be able to go to the rink playing game oh one. So um, we we anyways we discussed just for like performance based reasons because we play we have such a short turnaround and play the next day. Uh, yeah. I think we're gonna reevaluate going to to the ceremonies, but um, you know we're fortunate that we've been able to go to three because I know. You know, as you mentioned, like some athletes don't get the opportunity and it's so cool. Yeah, it is something else. I was lucky enough to go to all four, but I kind of, I went to the first one and then there is a cool little thing that the Olympic Olympic team does. Um, You can cut out halfway so you can walk and then you can leave. And I think Mm -hmm. that that's kind of smart. I don't know if they do that at the Paralympics, but it's so nice that you and your team have decided what to do next because if one person goes, you're like, you jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that would work out well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but a lot of athletes too, like they do have to compete the next day. And mm-hmm. and for the listeners and the, the viewers that don't understand, it's like a big holding pattern for athletes. Uh, like we don't get to see what you guys are seeing. And I don't know about your experience, but I don't know half the time ha- what the heck is going on. No. Like there's it's no like, CBC commentary telling us what's going on. It's like three, well, it feels like three to five hours of just standing in that holding room. Yeah. And and then you get to walk like into the tunnel and you wait there for another hour. Like, it's, yeah. It's yeah. It's a long time. <laughs> so long yeah it's not it's all this like behind the scenes kind of like you're a movie star yeah. or something or like a, a band coming out onto stage yeah. and, and it's not as glamorous as it seems no not at all <laughs> um so 2014 pyeongchang those games no that was sochi i beg your pardon yeah. so many games um so she was your first ones was there anything like wild that you were like i'm so new to this i don't know what to expect i mean you had billy bridges there who's been to a bajillion paralympics was he helping you like or was the were the team there for you for sure and i was i was 19 um <laughs> and tur- like turned 20 like i was still a young kid and like I, yeah. I, I i feel comfortable saying this now but i like i kind of matured late i i feel like anyways, I did too. like i i was like i was you know, I was so young at the time, but mm-hmm. I, you know, we were fortunate to have like so much veteran experience, as you said. Like I had Billy, Greg Wesley, um, Brad Bowden, and like so many. They they've all been to a numerous games, and so <laughs> um, you know, I was kind of just a young kid, like trying to soak that all in, and um, and especially you know, being on a team, like I, I was a, a young kid, still kind of developing and still learning. So <clears throat> from a performance perspective like I, I wasn't necessarily playing a ton um so I was just kind of watching them and how they prepare and how they compete um but I was just you know I was nervous and uh it was my first experience playing in front of I, I forget how big that stadium was but like five to ten thousand people I was nervous and yeah. um like they were they were just reassuring and um in how you know I prepare and uh that was definitely nice to have but uh no it was kind of just a a shock to me like it was my first media scrum with media from literally like Brazil and across the world yeah so um that was that was one thing when I walked into that I was like whoa (laughs) like mind blown you're like this is a different stage right like for me I felt like the Olympics were definitely a different realm of things and my first mm-hmm. games I was like wow I, I don't actually know what this is about and then I'm in it and now I want to go again yeah, but it's four exactly. years away mm-hmm. <laughs> so so, so in those long. four years leading up to your second games what was going through your head were you like I gotta go again I want to go again we'll see what happens like how does it work for Sledge yeah. yeah there was there was never a question I was uh, <laughs> I was ready for another one um yeah and and i think at that point as i as i mentioned before like i was really young so i i think like i took those next few years to 
to go from just like existing on the team to like I want to like I want to have an impact. I want to you know I want to play a huge role on this team and help us win. Yeah. Um, so I think the next few years, especially, was about establishing that and uh, and you know it's crazy how how long as you just mentioned like four years seems when you just finished the games but then yeah. it really does kind of fly by when you're when you're in the heat of the moment um it really does i don't know i don't know how or why but you're like on to the next 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 yeah next. and then you're yeah. like holy crap there's another games going on and i'm going <laughs> yeah 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 even season to season like you finish a year and you're kind of like oh like i just need a i need a break a mini but, break yeah yeah, yeah wild so cool so um 2014 to 2018 very different games from the 2022 games <laughs> as you were saying like getting checked for covid and everything like mm -hmm. that what was the like dynamic going into those games for you and the team was it just like don't get sick or travel together stay together don't see anyone else like what was yeah that? yeah and I, and I myself um got COVID right at the at Christmas uh I guess oh my 2021 gosh. and it's kind and of a blessing a few, and a curse right yeah yeah it was far enough away and then a few other teammates uh over the next few weeks got COVID as well and and so there was like this fear of um are, are we gonna are we all gonna make it um yeah. and, and so what we did at the end of January we we left for the games I think uh at end of February, I can't remember exactly the day, but we we moved to Calgary for about 40, 40 say 40 or so days um, and lived in a hotel. Uh, for 40 and, and, days. Yeah. And uh, and we, we trained together. A nice together. hotel? Was it nice? Oh, yeah. We, okay. Yeah. It, was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't like the Hyatt. four points out at, at the COP, no. which I'm used oh, to. Oh, no. Which, oh, nah, uh, Do we all prison. know that one? <laughs> Is that, <laughs> that like is a, that one? Yeah, that is a prison. Um, <laughs> we're, we're I'm glad actually, you said it. <laughs> oh, I, like, I love Calgary, but like that for the most part, that is our experience when we go to Calgary. And like, I most times that we we head out there, I'm like, oh, I have no desire to go. But no, fortunately, we're at the Hyatt downtown. It's, it's okay, a nice good. hotel. But I think anytime you eat the same meals for 40 straight days, you you get sick of them. Uh, yeah. And so anyways, like we did that and honestly, the team was in such good spirits. Like we we're together every day. Like we don't always have that opportunity because um, we're, we're a decentralized program. So it was nice to just like spend an extended period of time together, um, really get to like grow and, and develop and um, even like get closer in, in that short amount of time as a team. So like yeah. team morale was great. Uh, and you know like I, I i know in the past i've said this about other teams as well but like we have such a great group of guys right now and and like we're very close-knit uh care a lot about each other uh i think we've built like a really good foundation like a really good culture um mm -hmm. you know like we're we're open we're honest with each other and everybody's committed and and hold each other accountable and so we we were in a great position um going to beijing and uh, I think the, the experience there was, as you mentioned, like far different than the past, yeah. uh, almost like a, a relief to get there. Yeah. Um, but at, at the same time, like, you know, it, it, it's so nice to be there and compete at the, on the highest stage, at the highest level. But then, you know, one of the things that makes the game so unique and so special is, um, you know, kind of the fan experience and like this, this global right. aspect of, of bringing people from all across the world together uh, to celebrate sport and, and it, it lacked that. Uh, so it was, it was a little different than in the past two. Yeah, that would be weird. Like not having anyone cheering. I mean, for hockey, when you're in the arena, can you like hear the fans? Like that's a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we're free, I mean, we are loud. Like let's get real. Yeah. We're really loud. Pyeongchang was crazy. I remember we played South Korea in the semifinals and they had on the jumbotron they were they had a decibel reading and it was like 105 or something like that. 
And oh I remember God. that so well because, like, you could not turn to the guy next to you on the bench and and Talk. make out what they were saying, let alone, <laughs> like, trying to communicate on the ice. Uh, How do you so, train? How do you train for that? Like, you are normally uh, training in, like, uh, an empty arena, so, right? Yeah. We, so, actually, we've, uh, in the past, like, that's what we've done, especially going into the major, major tournaments, like the games. Like, we were yeah. literally... Like we've had some horrible soundtracks that are just like, it's like cheering. It's like radio static almost. Like one of oh. one of the ones was radio mm-hmm. static that they just turned up to basically max volume. We've also had like a soundtrack that was that was just fans cheering as well. Cool. Um, <laughs> so we we've practiced that several times in in, in the past. Um, okay and now and then you go to 2022 where it's like silent and you can hear oh, people you, probably like spitting yeah yeah you can hear you can hear someone whisper and that's, that's yeah the yeah wow i yeah, yeah that's super interesting because when i'm in the half pipe you know like i'm so focused at the time that i shouldn't be able to hear them cheering mm-hmm. uh and when i do hear them cheering i know things are not going to go well yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got some issues happening if you can hear uh, them. <laughs> yeah, true. Then you're not dialed. Well, that's, yeah. that's, I guess similar for us. Like I would say, you kind of like block block it out when you're on the ice, almost. But then yeah. you really notice it when you're in between shifts on the bench. So I think yeah. I'd notice it if I was in the penalty box. I'd be like, "Oh God, everyone yeah, hates yeah. me right now." <laughs> it, it'd be super important for you, though. You need to be dialed going down a half pipe. So yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I would hear the people I'm like oh Mercedes you really need to like, <laughs> pay attention here come on yeah. anyways oh my gosh so your third Olympics done and how are you feeling for the next four years or next year I'm like I'm so excited for the for the next few years I like honestly I'm so I'm 28 now like I would prefer as long as I'm as long as I can stay healthy and mm-hmm. as long as, as you know, sport keeps getting younger, as long as I'm yeah. still good enough eight years from now yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and still um, able to contribute, then I would love to, I'd love to compete in two more, but. Um, no, because that could be 2030. Yeah. yeah and then um, that could be in Vancouver again. Yeah. I, my fingers are crossed that, that Vancouver gets I think you got be, this. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, yeah. This last games was my first one watching and I have never cheered so hard. Yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't know that. which way it would go, but I was like the biggest fan. Of, <laughs> it's just like nice to see all your friends yeah. out there competing. Yeah. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Was, was it, was it bittersweet at all or were you just like pure excitement? Um, pure excitement, then a lot of anger. Um, oh, yeah. All the emotions came yeah, through, probably true. like um, more yeah. than my experiences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think because I like, I can feel the pain. I can feel the excitement. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's true. just like I've lived it. And oh, man, I get goosebumps just talking about it now. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait awesome. to watch more. Well, Tyler, anything else you want to share from the Olympics? Paralympics. Oh, geez, I don't know. I, I like. I mean, I, I think the Paralympics, just in general, are at such like a pivotal moment right now. I, I, I mean, I've only really been kind of involved in the Paralympic movement for the past ten, eleven years, and and the growth that I've seen is is so incredible. And um, yeah. like, it's just so awesome watching uh, the development of our sport and and so many other sports continue to grow and, and evolve and um you know like there's olympians and paralympians and i'll talk you know because it's the paralympic uh series like I'll, I'll focus on the paralympics but there's some of the most inspirational and motivation motivating people that uh, i've ever been able to witness and like i think we we kind of we saw that in beijing like there are so many so many great performances yeah. Um, you know, Brian McKeever comes to mind or, or Mark Arends, Like I had Mark Arends so on. I'm like, I can't even yeah. read your bio, man. You have so many yeah. medals. You're ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, like, I, I think just, just to, to cap it off, I, like, I just encourage people to continue to follow and support and, um, yeah. and, uh, and continue to, to try and grow the, 
the Paralympic movement. And um, no, I, cause I think there's, there's so many awesome people and stories behind those people that, um, that have so much value. I agree, man. I can't wait to talk to more. It's, it's so yeah. awesome. And like behind every Paralympian, there's a story behind every Olympian. There's also a story. And I love that we all get to hang out together. It, it makes my heart happy. Tyler, Absolutely. where can people uh, find you online if they want to follow you? Uh, on Instagram at Tyler McGregor eight. Uh, I, I use Twitter a little bit, which I believe is, is similar, but it's Tyler McGregor zero eight. Uh, okay. and that's, mostly where I'm present at, at the time. I haven't really uh, dabbled in the TikTok world yet. Oh, I've deleted but, it twice. So don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it, it can, be a little, can be a little toxic, but <laughs> yeah. we'll see. I might get there. <laughs> oh, love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tyler, for dropping in today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for dropping in today. You can find everything you want to know about dropping in with Mercedes at droppinginwithmercedes.com. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Thanks DJ Kenosis for the music and my mom for the intro voice.